Hey there, we're now going to talk about two very common queen sacrifices that can occur in the opening, but more importantly we're going to learn why these sacrifices can be very common and the tactical ideas behind them. So let's get started with the first sacrifice that occurs in the queen's gambit, so after d4, d5 and c4, and black playing the move e6, which leads to the queen's gambit declined, black definitely has other options, like taking on c4, but the move e6 is a fairly common move, and here knight to c3 is another very common move, increasing the pressure on the center, and after knight to f6, pinning the knight on f6 is very common, either after taking on d5 first, or playing the move bishop to g5 directly, and here in this position black can play bishop to e7 to break the pin, c6 is another very common move to reinforce the center, but knight b to d7 is a very interesting move which sets up a trap that is known as the elephant trap. So here the pawn on d5 seems to be hanging after white takes on d5 and pawn takes. Since the knight on f6 is pinned, it might look like the pawn on d5 is hanging. But here, as we'll see, taking on d5 is a very bad move. I just want to mention that here in this position, white could continue with a move like e3 or knight to f3. But taking on d5 is actually quite bad. Before I show you why, let's try to understand what white did in this position. White developed the queen side pieces and didn't develop any of the pieces on the king side. And we see that the king on e1 doesn't have a lot of squares. So after taking on d5, white is grabbing a pawn and this knight seems to be pinned because the bishop is eyeing the queen on the 8 but here black can actually take the knight on d5 and the point is that after bishop takes and bishop to b4 we see that the king on e1 doesn't have any squares to go and the only way to stop the check is to play queen to d2 and now black can take the queen directly or even first play king takes d8 because the queen on d2 is pinned but taking the queen on d2 is good enough and after king takes and king takes black gets an extra piece for a pawn with no compensation for white. So in this case black is temporarily sacrificing the queen but in the end black is getting a material advantage. And the other very common queen sacrifice that we might get in the opening is a sacrifice where the side offering it is delivering a checkmate in return and this checkmate is called the legal mate. And here we're going to learn a pattern, again it's important to learn the ideas, because ultimately you will have to double check whenever you have the position on the board, whether this queen sacrifice is correct or not. But in any case, let's evaluate some positions where we might get this legal mate, after e4 and e5, knight to f3 is a very common move, attacking the pawn, and after d6, which is the filial defense, here developing the bishop to c4 is a very common idea, the bishop is going to be very strong on this diagonal. And a very common idea, played particularly by amateur players, is to pin a knight whenever it is possible. And in this particular position, black is not threatening to take on f3 because this bishop is actually quite important for black. Since black played the pawns to d6 and e5, we see that the light squares might become weakened if black gives the bishop for the knight quickly. So here we can definitely develop with a move like knight to c3. And in this position we already have a big threat. For example, if black plays a move like g6, with the idea to develop the bishop, here we can play the very nice knight takes e5, we capture a pawn, now we are threatening the bishop on g4, so if black takes the knight, after queen takes, we get an extra pawn and a much better position, we have better development, great control over the light squares, so this is already a winning position for white. But the other idea is that black could actually take the queen on d1. So this is the queen sacrifice where we just give the queen. And in this case we are not going to win material, but we are going to get a checkmate. So after bishop takes, king to e7 is the only move. And after knight to d5, we deliver this very beautiful checkmate with black's king on e7. And this is the pattern that we should aim for in the legal trap or legal mate. Three minor pieces delivering a checkmate. So if we go back to this position where black played g6 which is a very bad move, some of the tactical ideas that we see are that the knight on g4 is a bit loose and we have this idea to deliver a checkmate. So knight to c6 is a move 
that might be considered in this position for black. And as I said, we need to double check whether the idea works or not. For example, in this position, taking on e5 is actually quite bad because here, instead of capturing the queen, which is bad because here we get a very similar line after bishop takes king to e7 and knight to d5, we get a very similar checkmate. In this position, black has the extra option of capturing with the knight. And now the bishop on g4 is defended, so in the end, black is getting an extra piece. But now that we know this pattern, we can see that a move like knight to d4, for example, is not a big threat. For example, here if we castle, after knight to d4, which is spinning the knight, we could defend the knight with a move like bishop to e2. But here we also have the same idea of going knight takes e5, because now in this position, after pawn takes, we grab the bishop. And again, we get a better position, even though in this particular position, black might take the pawn on c2, after rook to b1, we get better development and great control of the light squares. And again, if black captures the queen, we just get this very similar legal mate. So the main point is to visualize these tactical opportunities that we may have in this position. In addition to castling here, we might play the move h3, which is an interesting way to get the checkmate that we studied. Here in this position, black's best try is to take on f3, and after queen takes, white is getting a slight advantage, having the battle development and the two bishops. Because after bishop to h5, if black wants to keep the pin, now we have again the same idea of knight takes e5, we are attacking the bishop, and here after bishop takes e1, we get the same checkmate, and after knight takes e5, we capture the bishop, and here in this particular position we also need to take into account that after knight takes e4, queen to b5, we get this fork, and white is getting the material back and keeping an extra pawn. So let's see another way on which we can get this checkmate. After e4 and e5, white might play knight to c3, which would lead to the Vienna game. And if black develops with a move like knight to c6, here f4 is a common idea. Here black has many options, taking on f4 is an idea, but d6 might be a logical move. And after knight to f3, black might have this idea of playing bishop to g4 to pin the knight. If black plays bishop to g4, Directly, then bishop to b5 is an interesting move for white, pinning this knight on c6. But let's imagine that black plays a6 to play bishop to g4 later, which is not very strong, but in any case, this is an idea that black might try. So after bishop to c4, black might try bishop to g4, and we see that we get a very similar position, where we have these minor pieces on the same squares. Now we have the difference that we have a pawn on f4, and here after taking on e5, black can take with the d pawn, which is the best reply. But if black takes on e5, now that we know the pattern, we see that this pin is actually not working for black, because after knight takes e5, we sacrifice the queen, but after bishop takes f7, king to e7, and knight to d5, we get a legal mate. So let's now evaluate another completely different position where black can use this idea. So here in this position, it is white to play, white is doing very well actually, because this pin is actually annoying, but we need to watch out for sacrifices to break the pin. So here, queen to d2 is actually a very strong move, overprotecting the bishop on g5, and now we have ideas to capture on f6, and then invade with the queen, for example after knight d4, Bishop takes, and pawn takes, after queen to h6, white is already having a winning position. Queen to g7 checkmate is coming, and black cannot avoid it. But here the move knight to d5, which might look interesting at first sight because we increase the pressure on the knight, is actually a very bad move. So here, taking on d5 is not a refutation because now white can take on f6, and after pawn takes, queen takes is not possible because the knight is controlling the f6 square. But after pawn takes, now that the g4 square is not controlled by the bishop, queen to g4 is forcing a checkmate after king to h8 
and queen to g7. So after knight to d5, black's position seems to be hopeless, but again we see this idea of a loose bishop pinning a knight, and here black has this spectacular move, knight takes e4. Capturing a pawn and attacking the bishop on g5, and now it is black the one who is having an advantage because after bishop takes, black is just forcing a checkmate after bishop takes f2, king to e2, and here black has two ways to deliver the checkmate, either by playing knight to d4 or by playing bishop to d4. So keep in mind these two important queen sacrifices whenever a knight is pinned by a bishop to a queen. This is not an absolute pin, so there can always be this idea of sacrificing the queen either to win more material or to give a checkmate. If you want to know more about queen sacrifices, you might want to check my video about one of the best queen sacrifices, if not the best queen sacrifice ever played. If you haven't done it already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.